Girl, Minister Asia, welcome back to the Ambassadors Hour. We have a really good one planned for you today. So, if you're new to the Ambassadors Hour, let me tell you a little bit about us and then we'll get into the meat of the message. The Ambassadors Hour is a telecommunication outreach ministry that's solely dedicated to speaking in present truths. And today, our truth is don't you miss it. So, stick into the video so you won't miss it. Well, on the Ambassadors Hour, we start every episode by saying our mantra. So I'm going to say it the first time and then you can join in with us. The mantra is just this, for I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ and this is the hour to recognize me. Now that you've heard it, let's try to say it. For I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ and this is the hour to recognize me. Well, I know it's like unbefitting to ask, but I should. Why don't you just go ahead and give the ambassador's hour a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell so that you can see when we upload new videos. We are also a subsidiary of Loving People by Sharing Christ. Loving People by Sharing Christ is a Christian support group. It's found on Facebook. So go on and find Heather Wynn and Renata C. McFadden and go and give Loving People by Sharing Christ a big thumbs up. Follow them if you need daily encouragement like daily devotionals gifts, memes, and other graphical depictions of the undying love of Jesus Christ. So now that we got the brass tacks out of the way, let's talk about our topic. Don't you miss it. Now, there's a famous saying that says, don't miss the forest for the trees. Sometimes we spend so much time looking at the things that are right before, of, before us that we forget to zoom out and know that there's a great, beautiful picture ahead of us but sometimes we get so consumed with the cares of the world that we negate to realize that god's promises are yea and amen and they're worth standing upon so in today's video i'm going to read a post that i made on facebook and i'm going to talk to you a little bit about it so let me get ready to read got my little handy dandy phone right here listen up every moment in your life is significant so if you see me looking down i'm reading on my phone the post on facebook okay so every moment in your life is significant the other day zay and i had a heated fellowship slash dignified debate in the end she was right but we were sitting conversing with a relative from boston and amidst the reminiscing of course mommy's death day came up and i kept saying mommy died on the 28th and zay was like no it was the 29th and stated all of the supporting evidence. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how I could forget such a significant date. But as the wise big sister she is, Zay stated, and I paraphrase, it's because your world stopped, Asia. You were always there with her. And truly for the past six and a half months, on many levels, my world did stop. But one level that will never be halted is that of my faith. Proverbs 13 and 12 states, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And for many years, I never got to the B clause of that verse, which states, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. This week on the Ambassador's Hour, I revisit a familiar topic entitled Holding On to Hope. And I was sharing with my other big sister, Tara, that I wasn't going to upload it because I cried. And she, in her infinite wisdom, stated, and I paraphrase, but you have to. There are many ambitions that we postpone because of the adversities we face. In those moments of frailty, we've forsaken to see the promises that God has already made and neglect to stand on the truth that his promises are yea and amen. That means, so let it be. In this month's issue of Chronicles from the Cocoon, I deal with the topic of portrayal versus pursuit. In the world of which we reside, it's a social media driven society. As a whole, we spend the vast majority of our time finding the proper lighting, picking out the correct filters and frames, 
failing to realize that despite the images that we portrayed, a true substance only manifests from the pursuit of his promises and fulfilling the holy longings and righteous inner cravings, which are merely hints of your purpose that has been deposited in your soul to gnaw at you until you dig deep enough past the surface to truly cultivate the character that can only be contoured by Christ and in essence authentic authentically be exactly who God always purpose predestined and ordained for you to be before the foundation of the earth so I put on here as I disappeared from Facebook for a few months to work on the pursuit of my longings in hopes that my efforts yield a tree of life. I challenge each person that encounters this post to know that every moment and every breath has worth. It's the one dispensable yet non-renewable resource that we are gifted each day. Make it count. Now, that's why I came on today to talk about the topic. Don't miss it. Don't forget to notice the roses every morning stop and smell them and take in the scenery sometimes it's good for you to go the scenic route and to look around and see the beauty and the ambiance that god has entrusted with you to encounter that day sometimes it's okay if you're five minutes late for the meeting or if you don't have the perfect hair or the right outfit or the lighting is not there in my case if you're webcam is delaying a bit and the lighting is all off and your background's not what you want it to be you still have to make sure that you are anchored enough in god to know that he has already provided everything that you need concerning life pertaining to life and godliness that his promise are yea and amen that he will never fail you nor forsaken you that he will be with you even to the end of the earth no matter how bad it looks no matter how difficult it feels no matter how gloomy things are around you God is sovereign he rules all by himself and all you have to do is get anchored in him and develop that loving kind and caring relationship with him and then he will push you and thrust you to your next dimension of destiny I for so many years read Proverbs 13 and 12 and I just was stuck stuck on the a clause that hope deferred makes the heart sick so that means that if I forget the hope for the things that I desire and hope to be what God has called me to be and hope to have the riches and hope to have the blessing and hope to achieve those goals then guess what if I defer those hopes then guess what my heart will get sick and we know that bitterness rots the bones and so I will always think of it in that phrase but I forgot to keep reading and I forgot and I really missed the B part of it that it says that a, a longing fulfilled is a tree of life so when we get past what we don't see and we push past the pain and we go past the agony and the adversities and those things that stifle and deter us and distract us when we get past those stumbling blocks and we make them stepping stones and we cross over our jordans then we get to the other side we get to the tree of life there's a wealth of riches a wealth of prosperity and a wealth of promises and a wealth of promotion that god has laid up for us the bible depicts that i have not seen ear hath not heard neither entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for those who love him but the spirit reveals those very things to you so i challenge you today don't miss it don't miss your moment don't miss your opportunity don't miss your season because you're so fixated on how it looks right now where you are now is just a season maybe a good season it may be an obscure season where no one knows your name it may look bleak it may look gloomy you may feel down you may be like me i'm in a season of grief i was studying it and in the jewish version the Kamash, it talks about how you have literally one year and in Lamentations, they give you a year and a half. So I'm somewhere in the middle of my purgatory of grieving my mother. But you know what? Even in this season, I'm doing a little trim back and cut through and I'm going not miss it. I cut off all of my dead ends and my split ends. And I said, you know what? I'm taking out the weave. I was like, oh, I normally film like this because I want to be fat 
but I put on my glasses because I don't want to miss anything. I want to see with keen and crisp vision everything that God has for me. Even if people look upon me and aesthetically I may not be as pleasing to them, I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I know I'm a mess, an ambassador for Christ. This is the hour to recognize me, for me to recognize me so that it can manifest and portray on the screen so that everyone who clicks on this video or goes and likes loving people by sharing Christ or sees me in the grocery store or sees me in the gym, they can say, oh, hey, Minister Asia, I tuned in into this episode of the Ambassador's Hour. And you know what? I'm not going to miss it. I'm not going to be so fixated with what's going on presently that I feel fail to hope for what my future can be. You know, I think about the Reverend Jesse Jackson when he um, did his debate for the Democratic, um, I think it was the Democratic Nationals in like eight, 1987. Either way, I was only like four, so hey, I don't know. But I know his catchphrase, it was keep hope alive. And that's what you have to do in your life. You have to keep hope alive so that those longings and those inner cravings as long as they're righteous, you can fulfill those things and you can allow them to manifest because they will be a tree of life. And you know that trees are grounded. They're rooted in their anchor. And you know what? The rooting system is so wonderful and it all starts with that one seed that you allowed to germinate and you allowed to manifest and you did not look at what it looked like around it when the wind was blowing it didn't blow it away when the sun came out it didn't scorch it when the birds came by they didn't eat it you allowed that thing to get rooted you allowed it to germinate you watered it with faith and then it grew and manifested into a big huge tree just never know where you are in the germination process the seed may be just getting there the water may just be coming and a few little roots are sprouting out but allow your dreams to grow with inside of you cultivate them every day do like Habakkuk says in chapter 2 Write the vision, make it plain upon table so that he that readeth it may run with it. The vision is for an appointed time. You do it, Terry, you wait for it because it's going to surely come. Your dreams are going to come. That size 12 I want is going to come. And I cannot get deterred by what I see with my lighting, with my background, with all those things and neglect doing the ambassador's hour and chronicles of the curvaceous and chronicling those moments because I will indeed regret seeing myself when my hair journey finishes. Oh, that was the first day you cut your hair, Asia. Oh, that was when you had just lost your first 11 pounds of your grief. Um, weight because I gained 49 pounds after mommy died now I have 38 of those pounds to go and then I'll be back on my original weight loss journey and so if I fail to chronicle those things and I just see the fact oh wow as you got up to 318 pounds and I look at that and I say, oh my God, I don't want to get on the camera. Oh my God, I can't let people see me cry. Oh my God. Then I'll look back and guess what? I will have missed every moment that made me. I will have missed everything to say you know what god i remember when i didn't have a high definition camera god i remember when i did not have the right background that i wanted or green screen and all those things and i will begin to to miss what god has ahead for the ambassador's hour because i'm looking at where we are now don't you miss it don't allow the relationship that you're in now to hinder you from missing your Boaz because you refuse to make the right decisions to surrender your heart, your will, and your emotions to God. Don't let the ministry that you're in make you miss your moment for being who you're called, predestined, and ordained to be just because the people who are before you don't see it. Whatever it is that is stifling you, whatever it is that is impeding you, whatever it is that is hindering you from manifesting the full, powerful, entire will of God, don't miss it. Don't miss it. And I know you're listening to that phrase and you're like, what are you saying that don't match? Those things that are hindering you, those things that are impeding you, those things that you're 
that are stifling you, if you get so fixated on them and they become your God, then you will miss what God has for you. Isn't that something? You get it? I hope you do. Well, I'm so glad you tuned into this episode of the Ambassador's Hour. And I want you to know that every moment of your life is significant. There are lots of times in my life, retrospectively, when I look back in retrospect and I can see, man, I wasn't really all that big when I was complaining about losing the weight. I wasn't really all that broke when I wanted to be rich. All those things, the couldas, the wouldas, the shouldas, the maybes, it hindered me from enjoying those seasons of my life. I bound myself in standards and beliefs and paradigms that only netted me and anchored me in mediocrity instead of thrusting and catapulting me to the next dimension of my destiny. I stay cemented in my sorrows. But today we have a proverbial jackhammer and we're gonna chisel our way out of this cement and we're going to go and we're gonna ascend to the higher heights and the deeper depths in God. Don't you miss it. Don't miss what God is about to do on the ambassador's hour. Don't miss what God is about to do with loving people by sharing Christ. Don't miss what God is about to do in Chronicles of the Curvaceous. Don't miss what God is about to do with Chronicles from the Cocoon. Don't miss what God is about to do in your life. Don't miss your moment. And a way that you can ensure that you do not miss your moment is by taking the opportunity to exercise your faith because you know that we are another speaking spirit and we can't shut up until the devil begins to fear it till he knows that the people that we are are powerful people with integral hearts and that we stand upon the promises of God, which are, again, as I've said multiple times, yay and amen, because I'm repeating it until it resonates with your spirit so we have to call those things that be not as though we were let's pause for a moment and say a few confessions over our life as we sum up the message don't you miss it say i declare that i will not miss my moment say it with power i declare i will not miss my moment i decree that i will not get in my way i declare that i won't allow anyone or anything to hinder me from the promises of god manifesting in my life do you believe that are you going to allow anyone or anything to hinder you from the promises of god manifesting in your life say i declare that i am the head and not the tail above only and never beneath I'm the lender, never the borrower. I declare I'm the righteousness of God. I decree and declare that I have everything that pertains to life and godliness, that wealth and riches shall be in my house. And if I said it a little fast, pause, rewind the video, and say your confessions again, because you have to confess it until you possess it. If you don't see wealth and riches in your life, that's illegal because the Bible says, beloved above all things, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So you have to go back to the root of the thing, your soul, make sure you're prospering. And here on the Ambassador's Hour, we did a 40 day soul fast. So go back and watch that if you need help with making your soul prosper. One last confession. I declare that God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. I declare I have a sound mind. See, a lot of times we miss our moments because the spirit of fear, it stifles us. It almost freezes us in our moments and it makes us so startled that we can't even breathe. And it's just so so debilitating that we can't go forward but today we're gonna go forward right into the word you know i can't come on the ambassador's hour without talking to you about the word of god and everything is established by two or three witnesses and my first witness comes from the old testament first kings chapter 18 verse number 43 when elijah told his servant there was going to be a great abundance of rain he told him to go and look up past the sea 
And he said, I don't see it. He went back seven times and he still didn't see it. But you know, seven is symbolic of completion. And on the seventh time when he went back, he seen a hand, a great hand coming down from the sky. And sure enough, there were black clouds and there was a great rain that came down upon Ahab and Jezebel. There may be enemies before you today and you cannot see the rain that is going to come down and you cannot see that Jehovah Hamole has this thing worked all out that he's vengeance his mind says the Lord and he shall repay all you can see is the earth the hurt and the agony and the ramifications of the thing that happened to you but trust me God got you don't miss it by letting bitterness and anger and resentment sit in all you have to do is first Peter 5 7 cast your cares upon him for he cares for you my second witness is when Jesus went to Bethsaida, they brought to him in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 24, a man that was blind. And then Jesus, he spat upon the ground. And sometimes we're so bougie, nobody spit on us, but I'll let Jesus spit on me any day. Anyway, back to the subject. So Jesus spat upon the ground. He took the clay, he put it on the guy's eye. And he asked him the first time, he says, what do you see? He said, I see men as trees. See, his vision wasn't as keen as of yet but Jesus touched him yet a second time and it depicts that he told him to look up and when he looked up he was restored and then he asked him what he could see and he saw the men very clearly men walking around sometimes we need a second touch from Jesus you've been to the altar you've laid prostrate you even been behind the veil but you allow the cares of the world to snuff out your seed you allow the opposition and people and ministry and everything to distract you from the presence and the promise of God but I challenge you today to get that second touch from Jesus and this time don't miss it don't miss everything that God has planned for you because you're not looking up the Bible says look to the hills from with comes your help for all your help comes from the Lord and I will say my final witness is those virgins in Matthew chapter 10 the 10 virgins Five were foolish and five were wise. Each one of them had oil in their lamps. They were to go and wait on the bridegroom. So they went out into the city to wait on the bridegroom. It took a long, long, long time to come. And they got drowsy and they fell asleep. And while they were sleeping, sure enough, those lamps went out. And when midnight came and the sound rose and there's the bridegroom, they woke up to trim their lamps to turn that light back on inside. And sure enough, the five foolish virgins had no more oil, but the five wise virgins that had their lamps and the jar of oil to accommodate those lamps refilled their lamps and they turned on their lamps and the foolish virgins was like, give me some, give me some oil, give me some of your oil. What? No, you should have prepared for the journey. We were each in destination en route to see this bridegroom. They went into the um, wedding feast they went into the wedding without the other ones and sure enough the other foolish ones went back to the city to buy more oil but by then the bridegroom had arrived they went and knocked upon the door and he did not let them in he said i do not know you he said you should have kept what don't miss it don't miss him because you're not prepared don't miss the season that God has before you because you fail to prepare. My definition of success is that success happened when preparation meets opportunity. There are so many opportunities right around the corner and you just have to prepare for those things. Now, my prayer for you today is that you get prepared, that you don't miss your moment, and that God restores and recalibrates everything that you relinquished, forfeited, and aborted 
in those past seasons. That's all behind you. It's in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. And in this hour and in this season, you won't miss your moment because you know that every moment is significant, that you're gonna stop and smell the roses. Even if you're on the scenic route, you're gonna look at those scenes on that route and you're gonna pay close attention because the Lord speaks in a small, subtle voice, even if it has to come from a donkey. Guess what? It's time to pray. Bow your head if you can. If not, just listen and agree in the realm of the Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another opportunity to record the Ambassador's Hour. I repent for every time that I neglected to do so, Lord God. We pray for these, your ambassadors, that you touch them, Lord God, with a finger of love and you strengthen them where they're weak and you build them up where they're torn down and you mold and you shape them into the men and women of God that you have called for them to be, Lord God. I ask and I pray the prayer, Lord God, that Paul prayed for Timothy, that you stir up the gift on the inside of them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you do like David said in the 92nd Psalm, that you erect the horn of oil like a unicorn torn that you allow a fresh anointing lord god to be funneled down from heaven to remove every burden to destroy every yoke oh god i pray that the idios power of the holy spirit come upon them that you deal with them both publicly and privately lord god i pray lord god that it just be like ezekiel when you come to him and say the spirit of the lord come to you and ask you can the bones in your life live and you say you know god but you do just like Ezekiel, you prophesy to the wind and that the sinews and the flesh and everything come upon every fragmented bone in your life and that you stand erect as an exceedingly great army and that you go forth in the things of God, that you march on to fulfill your purpose and you do not miss your moment and you do not miss your season because you're grounded, rooted and anchored in God and you're established and bearing much fruit. We decree and declare that this is your hour and this is your season and that you know that the promises of God are yea and amen and that there is no good thing that God will withhold from you that he's given you everything that you need pertaining to life and godliness and that you will grab horns grab a hold to the horns of the altar and pray without ceasing that you will grab a hold to the plow and you will not look back but so that you will be fitted for the kingdom of heaven we thank you lord god for every promise we thank you lord god for every vision lord god we thank you lord god that you're opening doors in our life that no man can shut lord god we thank you for our opportunities lord god and we will not Forget to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise as we go through the next level of elevation. We thank you so much. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I suggest that you get to know him. And if you don't know how, please read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. 13. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and God raised him from the dead. And that makes you say, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the Ambassadors Hour. Go over to Facebook, like Loving People by Sharing Christ, the Christian support group. And I love you so much. Goodbye for now.